Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, in this episode I show you my full workflow on shooting urban landscapes. Bonjour mesdames et messieurs, my name is Serge Ramelli, I'm a French photographer living in the beautiful city of Paris, right now traveling in the US to make some photographic books, and I make two tutorials per week. In last episode I showed you how to make a Lord of the Ring type of uh, photo, here is the final result. This week, I realized it's been a while that I didn't show you my full workflow on shooting urban landscapes. So I'm going to show you exactly how I shoot my urban landscapes, how I get my sunset to be right, at least from my viewpoint, and my full workflow. So here it is, my full workflow on shooting urban landscape. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. So if you want to get the raw file for free, of this beautiful photo of Notre Dame in Paris, make sure you jump over to my website, photosearch.com, subscribe to my newsletter, and you will get a link to a goodies page where you will get these raw files for free. So let's jump over to Lightroom and let me show you. It's been a while that I haven't showed you like my full workflow on shooting sunsets and nice urban photos. And I was shooting one last week and, um, and I just wanted to show you from A to Z again, uh, how I would retouch uh, sort of a sunset photo. First, let's talk about some technical aspects to the photo. Uh, last week in Paris, we had an amazing sunset. Uh, it's this type of sunset that only lasts about two minutes. And, um, and the problem with this sun type of sunset is they get, they get very red. But when the, light, when the city lights come on, uh, they become totally blue and lose all of their uh, you know, coolness type of thing. So anyway, so it, they are very, very short. So uh, I wanted to get uh, the sunset, so I was exposing for the highlights. What does that mean? If you look at the exposure of this photo, you will see the buildings are pretty dark and you will see that the sky is pretty bright. Now, this is my rule. I expose and I change, uh, I go into manual mode and what I did is I went to F18 and ISO 50 because I wanted to get a long exposure. I was on a tripod because I was trying to get a bit of a sickly water look. Uh, which you do get for four seconds. You don't get this very crispy, high textures waters. That's the first thing. The second thing is I just played around with the seconds here until I could see details in the sky and, and my buildings were not too dark. And you know when you have that, uh, like for me, this is kind of like the ideal exposure for a urban landscape. Of course, unless you want to do HDR. Now, this was shot with a Sony A7R, but it also with any high-end DSLR, you usually get a very good quality raw file. So this is the raw file out of the oven. So it is exposed for the highlights. If I would have uh, put in like five seconds or six seconds of exposure, um, my sky would be completely white and I would lose all the details. So that's very important. For this technique to work, you need to expose for the highlights. And that's gonna get, that means dark buildings, but still visible and bright sky, but still you can see visibility. You know when you have that, you've got it exposed right. Okay, now let's jump over in the retouch itself. So let's develop module and I'm going to open up the highlights. Now check this out and bring down the highlights. Okay, this you know, and I'm going to hold down the uh, uh, white with the Alt key until I see some white points. Okay, this white one means it's 100% black and then I'm going to use the black slider like this. Okay, so that's my basic retouching. Now, the thing is when you do that, uh, you, what you end up getting is a bit of an HDR look. So to undo the HDR look, I advise you to lower your, your clarity. This is gonna bring back a natural look. At this point, I'm first gonna get rid of a couple of spots because uh, I had lost, I have a little uh, tool that I used to blow air on my, on my sensor and I lost it for a couple of days. So I got all kind of sensor dust Plus, uh, yeah, that's what happens when you make long exposure. So I just want to take the most visible ones out. Okay, now the white balance is completely not good. So we usually have the choice between three white balance. Daylight, uh, which I kind of like on this one. Daylight is really, would, that, would have been the right balance for this. You see, that's how the sky was very, 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 very red. Okay, and then we have cloudy, which is going to make the whole thing even warmer. And then we have shade. That's going to make things even more crazy. Um, I think, uh, I think I'm going to go for shade and even add a little bit of magenta, but the problem is that my, the entire photo now is completely red 
And if you want to get depth in your photo, it's very important to have warmth and cold in the sky. If it's only cold or if it's only blue, it's going to lack a bit of depth. So usually what I do is uh, I add a couple of, but first add a couple of um, filters there. But first I'm going to take care of something. I want to, and about the profiles correction, which is going to take out a, a lot of vignetting effect. Remove chromatic aberration. Let's see. Let's move in and see if there was any chromatic aberrations. Chromatic aberrations is little, you know, on the edge here. That could have happened like right in the middle of the sun. A uh, little uh, red or blue line around the edge of the photo. Remove chromatic aberration. Uh, it's not doing much because there's hardly any there. So it's kind of cool. And I'm going to click on auto on the, uh, on the upright function to make the uh, Notre Dame straight. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay, now I like the photo, but I think, uh, you know what, looking at it, I think I'm going to go back to uh, daylight. I think daylight is stronger, uh, is, a, is a better white balance. It's, it's more blue, but it's, it's more how it felt at this time. Okay, and uh, so now you got blue there and you got a bit of warmth there. So what I'm going to do now is take a graded filter and I'm going to lower the exposure so we get the details of what's going on in the sky and maybe add a bit of blue. So I'm adding a bit of blue here on top, uh, maybe not lowering that much, but just a little bit of blue, okay? And then the overall wild balance, I'm actually gonna warm it up a little bit and add a bit of magenta a little bit more. So, so we have blue coming to warm. Now, I tell you, to, to get a right sunset, you really have to nail your white balance. If your white balance is a bit off, then you're in trouble. Okay, I can see now I've got a couple of more spots now that I lower the exposure of the sky. And that's really annoying because uh, now I got it back and uh, you have to have a clean sensor. I'm sorry to give you such a dirty raw file, but the end result is gonna be kind of cool. Okay, so now I think we nail kind of the white balance. Uh, I wanna crop the photo because I think it's two, four third. I wanna make it more panoramic. So I'm gonna crop it a little bit here. Plus I don't like this part here. And maybe just a little bit there. Okay, and now, we have a more panoramic, I think it's a more pleasing view. I want to I want to close the photo because I took out all the vignetting. So to close the photo, I'm going to take again this gradient and I'm going to do one small gradient here and lower the exposure. Okay, and I'm just going to, it's a bit too much. So I'm going to lower this. You just, I want to darken the top here and I'm going to do the same thing here at the bottom. I want to, I want the attention not to be so much on this part here. Uh, so by making this darker, it's gonna put more the attention inside of the photo. Okay. I think I wanna be too much. I'm gonna give it a bit more space here. Just a little tiny more so that it breathes better. Okay, and now I want to, uh, now I'm gonna do the trick that I showed you last week to give it more drama to a photo, which I'm gonna lower a little bit of overall exposure to make the sky even more crazy. And I'm gonna re partially light the photo using radio filters. So I'm putting one radio filter here on the beautiful church of Notre Dame, boosting the exposure, but right now it's boosting the exposure everywhere, but in the circles, I don't want that. I'm gonna invert the mask. Okay, and I'm gonna feather it a lot. So it just brings back light here. Okay, then I'm gonna duplicate that and uh, make one circle here, duplicate that, make another circle here. You see, I don't, I'm trying to get an uneven light on this building. If I get an even light, it's boring. Okay, I'm going to duplicate, right click, and I'm going to do this here. And maybe boost the exposure on this one. Right click, duplicate, same thing here. Okay. And I like to, uh, I like to add even more drama with a brush. Once I've done a real filter, I take a brush and I'm boosting the exposure here, making sure that the feather 100% flow in density is around 90. And I'm just gonna add a bit more reflection here in the water there. And maybe brighten up here, brighten up there. You know, and I'm just relighting the photo. I don't like here because this was some workstation. So I'm gonna click on minus and take out the brush effect here. I don't want this to be too bright because it's kind of boring. And, um, and voila, maybe add a bit of contrast overall, bring back a little bit of exposure and re 
carrying a little bit like minus seven of clarity instead of minus 20. And that's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice photo. I think I would add this to my collection of nice sunset in Paris. Let me show you the before, uh, backslash key. Oops, sorry. Um, oh, I have a problem with that keyboard. I'm just gonna show you in a history. I'm gonna go back here. This is how we started. Okay, and this is where we are in a few. I mean, I'm always amazed by the power of Lightroom. It's like, oh my God. But you know, for this to work, you have to expose for the highlights and you have to have a nice sunset and you have to have a nice DSLR. But I think the result is pretty cool. And I think I'm gonna add this to my collection of books of, in, of Paris and uh, give it a shot. You know, you have the raw files for free try it for yourself and uh, I hope you like this. This is a bit like my modernized workflow 2014, but you see every photo doesn't have, it's the same recipe, but every photo is gonna have a slightly different white balance and every photo is gonna have a different way of using the writer filters. That's why you have to practice a lot and you have to view a lot of tutorials because it's gonna give you, you know, every light, every type of light has got a different way of processing. So, uh, that's why I try to give you a lot of examples as I go by my life and take photos. Hope you like this one and I'll see you in another tutorial. All right, guys, I hope you like this episode. If you have any suggestions or ideas of tutorials, please leave a comment on this video. And if you like this video, please share it to the world. Thank you so much and I'll see you in another episode. Mesdames et messieurs, au revoir.